The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, in this unique dispensation of the church age, what is a life that is without love in Christ? What is a love that we can love our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ without knowing his mind? And why are we emphasizing for you to learn Bible doctrine? Because all scripture being God breathed, it is profitable for doctrine, 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 for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. That is what it is most important. Training in the right wiseness of Jehovah. Training for you to look and to love with a pure heart. A love that could be purely coming out from the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in training you up. If you are a believer, when you are giving your things for the particular gift that has been given to you, like the administration, gift of help, or gift of money, or any other thing wherewith, the gift of management, or, or anything, helps means related to money, or mercy means related to money or any other help, whichever way you can, it has to be from a pure love to God. At the same time, if it is a pastor-teacher gift, his love towards the congregation will be to feed them with true isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation of the word, with the dispensing technique of dispensations. He cannot go any other method, any other technique apart from dispensations. He has to go through that subject, he has to learn through that subject, and he has to make very well to show forth his love by rightly dividing the word of the Lord, and if he wants to show his love to you, he has to exegete the word from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21 with a pure heart, with a pure preparation, with faithfulness. The fidelity should not perish. He should tell in Alanco method and expose the reality of the word for you. And why is it so that so many pastors are rejecting this? Purely they don't love the Lord. That's as simple as that. The true love of a pastor teacher to the congregation is what? Jeremiah 3.15 tells, I shall send you shepherds after my own heart, whose duty is to feed you with knowledge and with understanding. Malachi 2.7 tells, the people will come to the pastors or to the Levites or to the priests because, the peop because they possess the knowledge and the people should come and learn knowledge from them. And why is it you are not able to understand the simple truth? The reality of the word is because you don't love the Lord. It's as simple as that. If you love the Lord, you will keep his commandments. His commandments is, for example, if you can ask what were the commandments to a pastor teacher, in Peter, in, in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, 1 verses 1 through 19, if you can look the the last verses, you have, after that breakfast, it has been stand written for that, our Lord said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me more than this? With a love called out of your heart, by my preciousness to you, a love which impels you to sacrifice yourself to me. He says to him, this is an expanded translation. He says to him, yes, Lord, that's what the Peter replies. My preciousness to you, that's what the most important word is. Out of your heart, by my preciousness to you, that is what if you really consider me as precious. Even if the pastor teachers today consider the Bible doctrine as precious, then what is your love to me? A love which impels you to sacrifice yourself for me. That's why a male believer, the pastor teacher gift which has been given to him, it is a temporary sacrifice in his life. He cannot go without sacrifice in feeding the word of the Lord, in learning the word of the Lord faithfully. Without sacrificing his life, he cannot come to show forth the true love towards Jehovah. Without sacrifice, it is highly impossible for us to look a sacrifice of a living realm, a sacrifice of the reality of the truth, a sacrifice of Bible doctrine, doctrine, doctrine. 
today what are we? Apostle Paul told, everything which was profitable to me, I counted it as dung. But today, we are counting everything worthy and counting Bible doctrine as dung and throwing it out in the pulpits. The mystery doctrine of the church age has not been taught properly. The unique spiritual life has not been communicated properly. Why? Because they think the terms and conditions of the Bible in the original Greek are technical and we should leave that nonsense to the theologians because my pastor have not thought to me. That's what they will tell. The nominal Christians today, the conventional Christians today, think the doctrine that we are communicating for them through this unique spiritual life is a very tough vocabulary and we may not understand it. But Bible intends that every believer have to understand it because it is his own life. It is his spiritual life. He cannot go against telling that I don't know. I can't learn this. I can't do this. No, you have to. Without which there is no way. And for a pastor teacher to inculcate these things, his life which impels for him to love the Lord, to sacrifice and to learn the doctrine. The same example what we can learn from the life of Peter over here. Our Lord says in the character translation, out of your heart, towards my preciousness, you have to give a sacrifice yourself for me. And the Peter said, yes. Yes, Lord, I will sacrifice myself to the love of true preciousness from my heart towards you. That cannot be no greater love than this that you sacrifice for me, says our Lord. There cannot be no greater love that you die for me. And what is the problem today? Neither they are exposing to themselves to the original Greek. Neither they are exposing to such kind of a pastor teacher like Robert Bunker Time, who has poured down his entire life of 53 years of pulpit ministry in exegeting the word and freely they are distributing for you the tapes and the videos so that you can sit and learn along with the books and you can learn and edify and start up your own organization and tell them the importance of the word so that you can carry out this torch to the next generation. No, you are not at all interested. You think what Robert Bunker Time, we have someone who can train us. If you have, go there, no problem. But know the truth, the truth shall set you free. Apply a life according to the rule which Apostle Paul told in Philippians 3, 16 and 17. We have a rule, a rule of this unique spiritual life, followed by the three adult stages, spiritual self-esteem, spiritual autonomy, and then spiritual maturity. And do you know what, brethren, in this trends of today's entertainment media to call, in the, in the media, what we are going through in a face-to-face? -face? Everyone has been given independently their own life to enjoy. Either you may take it or not, you reject it or not, we don't care. Everyone has been given the same individuality in their life to enjoy, to go through, to learn through. And if they're not interested, it is left to their own fate. We are neither worried in it. Let your blood be upon your own head by taking your own decisions and not being under the right pastor teacher work whose duty is to rightly divide the word of the Lord and tell you the truth. That is what it is happening today in a day-by-day -day process. A rejection of Bible doctrine. But Peter said, yes, Lord, I am willing to sacrifice my life for you. God's service doesn't call. It doesn't come with a bed of roses, dear brethren. As many ministers tell, your sorrow days have been gone and you have now the joyful days. God's calling calls for you to sacrifice. It comes with taunts and thistles. And you need to train them up. Like the ground which doesn't eat. And you need to once again tilt that ground with the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And that's the great duty of a pastor teacher. We shall continue in the next day the same discourse. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us with these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge our in Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.